Another book that I read around the same time that had a big impact on me, uh, and and there was actually a, a little bit of overlap with Jean Piaget as well, and I read it around the same time, uh, is uh, Jeff Hawkins' uh, On Intelligence, mm. which is a classic. And he, he has this vision of the mind as a multi-scale hierarchy of temporal prediction modules. And these ideas really resonated with me, like the, the notion of uh, a modular hierarchy um, of, you know, potentially um, of compression functions or prediction functions, I thought was really, really interesting. And it really shaped uh, uh, the way I started thinking about how to build minds. The, the hierarchical nature, the which aspect? Also, he's a neuroscientist, so he was thinking yes. like actual, he was basically talking about how our mind works. Yeah, the notion that cognition is prediction was an idea that was kind of new to me at the time and that, that I really loved at the time. And yeah, and the notion that yeah, there, there are multiple scales of processing uh, in the brain. The hierarchy. Yes. And this is before hierarchy. deep learning. These ideas of hierarchies in AI have been around for a long time. Uh, even before on intelligence, I mean, they've been around since the 1980s. Um, and yeah, that was before deep learning. But of course, I, I think these ideas really found uh, uh, their practical implementation in deep learning. What about the memory side of things? I think he was talking about knowledge representation. Do you think about memory a lot? One way you can think of neural networks as, uh, as a kind of memory you're memorizing things, but it doesn't seem to be the kind of memory that's in our brains, or it doesn't have the same rich complexity, long-term nature that's in our brains. Yes. The brain is more for sparse access memory so that you can actually retrieve um, very precisely like bits of your experience. The retrieval aspect, you can like introspect, you can ask yourself questions. Like yes. It, you can program your own memory. And language is actually uh, the tool you use to do that. I think language is a kind of uh, operating system for the mind. And you use language, uh, well, one of the uses of language is as a query that you run over your own memory. You use words as keys to retrieve specific experiences or specific concepts, specific thoughts. Like language is a way you store thoughts, not just in writing, in the, in the physical world, but also in your own mind. And it's also how you retrieve them. Like, imagine if you didn't have language, then you would have to, you would not really have a, a self internally triggered uh, way of retrieving past thoughts. You would have to rely on external experiences. For instance, you, you see a specific sight, you smell a specific smell, and that brings up memories, but you would not really have a, a, a way to deliberately, deliberately access these memories without language. Well, the interesting thing you mentioned is you can also program the memory, you can change it, probably with language. Yeah, using language, yes. Well, let me ask you a Chomsky question, which is like, first of all, do you think language is like fundamental? Like, uh, there's turtles, what's at the bottom of the turtles? They don't go, it can't be turtles all the way down. Is language at the bottom of cognition of everything? Is like language the fundamental aspect of like what it means to be a thinking thing? No, I don't think so. I think language You disagree is, with Noam Chomsky? Yes. <laughs> I think language is a layer on top of cognition. So okay. it, it is fundamental to cognition in the sense that to, to use a computing metaphor, I see language as the operating system uh, of the brain, of the That's human true. mind. Yeah. And the operating system, you know, is a layer on top of the computer. The computer exists before the operating system, but the operating system is how you make it truly useful. And the operating system is most likely Windows, not not Linux, because its um, language is messy. Yeah, it's messy and it's uh, it's um, pretty difficult to uh, uh, inspect it, introspect it. How do you think about language? Like we use actually sort of human interpretable language, but is there something like a deeper? It's closer to like, like logical type of statements. Um, like, yeah, what is the nature of language, do you think? Like, is there something deeper than like the syntactic rules we construct? Is there something that doesn't require 
utterances or so, uh, writing are, or so on. Are you asking about the possibility that there could exist uh, languages for thinking that are not made of words? Yeah. That, yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, the mind is layers, right? And language is almost like the, the outermost, the uppermost layer. Um, but before we think in words, I think we think in, in terms of uh, emotion in space and we think in terms of uh, physical actions. And I think uh, uh, babies in particular probably express his thoughts in terms of um, the actions uh, mm -hmm. that they've seen of the, or that they can perform and in terms of the in, in terms of motions of objects in their environment before they start thinking in terms of words. It's amazing to think about that as the building blocks of language. So like the kind of actions and ways the babies see the world as like more fundamental than the beautiful Shakespearean language you construct on top mm. of it. And we, we probably don't have any idea what that looks like, right? Like what? Because it's important for them trying to engineer it into AI systems. Mm. 